Hey everybody, it's Brian here with Explosive Review, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build your own Airsoft MOSFET. Uh, if you don't know what that is, go do a little bit of research online and you'll find tons of info about it. Uh, but chances are if you're here, you already know why you need one, so I'm not going to bother discussing that. First step is going to be to snap the tab off of uh, the center of the chip. We won't be needing this in the process of building it, so just wiggle it back and forth until it pops off, and you should have it nice and flush. So let's we'll set that aside. Next step is actually going to be to tap the hole. Now you don't have to do this, you can just use a bolt later on that'll pass right through it, but I have a tap and die set, so I find that this gives me a little bit of a sleeker design. If you want uh, more information on how any of this was done, You'll find a list of parts as well as a link to uh, a, a bit more extensive an explanation down below. So as you can see here, we can we can now screw in uh, our our screw, which is going to hold uh, our negative motor lead on, as well as some other components. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tin the leads on this. What that means is basically. Uh, dipping them in flux and then putting a coat of solder on. This is just going to make things flow a little bit better and uh, allow us to, to to get really good contact later on. You don't have to do this, you can still solder without it, but this definitely makes it a lot easier and, and gives you a lot nicer of a joint. We're also going to tin the leads uh, on our resistor um, or at least put flux on them. So basically after you put the flux on you, you don't necessarily need to tin them beforehand. So what we're going to do now is we're going to wrap the the leads of our first resistor and that one is the 2.2k ohm resistor. So you basically just wrap those around your leads and then go ahead and throw some solder on there. Now it's important when you're working with this chip that you don't just leave the soldering iron touching any lead for a huge amount of time. You can actually fry your components by doing that. So try to use, I think it's like a two second rule, never longer than two seconds actually on the part. Now this is our diode here. This is a 18 volt TVS diode. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm just bending it into the right shape. You'll see in a moment. Uh, what I mean by the right shape and I find that for the last bit here when you're creating a loop at the top that it helps to actually have your screw in so you're basically just bending the top of that lead around and you'll get a better view here in a second uh, of the complete shape of it it's basically so it sits just along the edge of the actual chip as you can see there that that's the kind of shape that you're going for Our next step is going to be to actually solder on the diode. This can be a little bit tricky. Um, it, it's quite a big piece of metal to get hot. Thankfully I have a good iron so it, it's not too bad but you might have to uh, take a little bit of extra time on there which isn't necessarily the best but do what you gotta do. We're now attaching our second resistor which is a 100 ohm resistor. Again, just twist it onto the left lead, add some solder, and that's all you really have to do there. We're now going to just take a pair of snips and we're going to snip our leads down because we don't need them super long. I usually try and get them as short as I can while still having good contact between all the parts. The shorter you get these, uh, the smaller the final product is going to be, so if you can get it small. You can get them, get them fairly short. Next step, we're going to take uh, some of the wire. Now, I usually use uh, 16 AWG here. Um, you can use different stuff if you want. This is just literally from the Home Depot, uh, but I've had really good results with, with this stuff, and I run it in all my guns, no problems, so that's good. What we're doing here is we're, we're actually bending the end of the wire into sort of a little loop shape around our screw. Now you can use a little ring terminal if you want to. 
However, if you ask me, it's one more bottleneck for the electrical current to go through. So what I actually do is I just bend it and then I really heavily tin the end of the wire so that the end of the wire is basically in a loop that allows me, as you can see there, to pass my screw through and then we'll go ahead and we'll screw this onto the the dump side of the uh, of the MOSFET chip. Now this should be good and tight. You can even use a little bit of dielectric grease in between to improve your contact if you want to. That's basically going to be our lead to the negative motor. Now what we're doing is we're attaching our negative battery lead. So we're going to be attaching that to the um, bottom pin there on the right hand side. Now I'm just using a pair of forceps. They act as a heat sink to protect all my components as well as they, they, they just give me a way of holding stuff on. Sometimes it's it's hard to have enough hands to do everything and hold everything in place and solder it so I find this helps. You might have to leave the iron on a little bit longer though and I find that I usually have to take it off and do a bit of cleanup afterwards but alright so we got that attached now. What we're going to do is we're going to wipe everything down with a bit of rubbing alcohol. You may have also noticed now that there's a little micro heat sink on the top. Again, totally not necessary, but it's just something that I put into my design that I like. They're pretty expensive, so not essential. Um, but anyway, cleaning down with alcohol will just get rid of any excess flux or stuff that you have left on that can actually cause damage over time. So we're just going to put a bit of heat shrink on this side. I'm using a uh, rework station, so I have a built-in heat gun, but just use a lighter or whatever you happen to have. Again, just be careful not to cook cook the chip. Again, a bit more heat shrink. We're basically putting heat shrink on anything that we could actually accidentally have a short with. So we're going to take our side resistor now, and we're going to solder on our uh, first trigger contact. There's not particularly any orientation to a trigger contact, so it's not really a big deal when you're in actually installing it into the gun. But again, just twist it together. I've already got a bit of flux on there, um, so the solder should flow nicely. Grab your iron. Get a bit on there. And go ahead and connect those two together. Now... I, I did wipe down with alcohol in between here. I just didn't show it. Save a bit of time. Now we're just going to put another piece of heat shrink all the way down. Cover that entire resistor if we can. Protect it. And go ahead and shrink that down. Now you're going to have to kind of position this resistor on top of the chip. It's a little bit hard to show. But um, it, it's basically so that it will fit through a gap in a buffer tube when you're installing it in an M4 which this one was going into. We're now going to prepare our positive um, battery and motor lead. Um, this one's continuous all the way through, so make sure you measure it correctly. In terms of wire lengths, I always tell people to err on the side of caution because you can cut it off at the end, but can not add more on very easily. So we're taking a little chunk out here of, of the middle of the wire. Um, and now we're going to actually attach our other trigger contact lead to that little gap in the wire. Now you can run run this one directly from the positive battery lead all the way through to your trigger contact, but this just makes it a little bit nicer, a bit neater, cleaner design overall. Um, so again, just go ahead, tin, tin your leads and, and solder those on. Um, as I was saying before, this design should work for any AEG. It's basically just measuring wire lengths to go to trigger contacts and motors. That's really the only thing that will vary. So this will work in pretty much any AEG. I've run it in AKs, I've run it in M4s, P90s, and uh, works fine in all of them, as you would expect. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to throw a bit of heat shrink on here again. Protect it, shrink that on down, a 
cut everything down to length. Now this is a mock-up sort of how everything is going to sit there. You kind of have to run it over the top so that it has a sort of almost circular profile. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually, in my case, I have to cut down that screw because I didn't have any short screws to use. Um, I, hopefully I'll pick some up in the future, but use what you got. So I just snip that down and uh, give it a bit of a file to remove any rough edges. And overall that actually saves space because normally if you have just a small one that goes all the way through, you need a nut on the other side to hold it in. But this one obviously doesn't. So a little bit, that, that ever so slightly slimmer profile. Now what I'm doing, I'm taking a really big piece of heat shrink. Um, what I actually do to make sure it's really tight is I take a pair of pliers on a slightly smaller piece and actually stretch it out just big enough to get over the top, then pass it through. Now I'm putting my positive motor wire, battery wire through, setting it all up in place. And of course, we're going to shrink that down. And voila, there you have it, one complete chip. Um, so as you can see, it's all, it's all finished. We obviously have to install it in the gun, but that will be another video. As always, this has been an explosive review. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and comment.